Ablaze with Love The Mission of St. Francis Xavier Can we ever say enough about Francis Xavier, the most dynamic Christian saint of the last 400 years and one whose name is synonymous with mission worldwide? Xavier hailed from Navarre in 16th century Spain. His family, though aristocratic, had fallen on hard times. An ambitious Francis desired to make a career for himself in the church. This is why he came to Paris in his mid-twenties to study for a master's in theology. Here it was that he came under the spell of Ignatius Loyola, his fellow student, who challenged him to serve an eternal king, Jesus Christ. Thoroughly transformed by the spiritual exercises, Xavier took a vow of celibacy, was ordained priest, and with six other companions whose leader was Ignatius, formed the original Society of Jesus. Ignatius placed his men at the service of the Pope. The Pope sent two of them to the Council of Trent, then in session. Another two Jesuits went to Germany and France to preach and give retreats. But Francis Xavier stayed in Rome as Ignatius' secretary. There were no plans at all to go to India. Now Portugal had recently acquired territories in the East and its king asked Ignatius for missionaries to preach the gospel in those new lands. Francis volunteered to accompany the Portuguese ambassador to Lisbon. It was an abrupt decision, quite unprepared for. Francis set out with only his crucifix, his breviary and a change of clothes. He had little else but an immense confidence. On March 25th, 1541, his ship left Lisbon. Francis was then 31 years old and he would never see Europe again. The sea voyage was long and perilous with just two or three stops at Madagascar, Mombasa and Socotra. When they reached Goa on May 6th, 1542, Xavier had been 13 months at sea. Golden Goa, they called it, because of its splendor and wealth. Francis was not impressed. He stayed at the local hospital and tended to the needs of the patients. His preaching and catechesis soon drew the attention of the local people, who likened the Jesuit to St. Paul, the great missionary, and called him Paulista. Francis also started the first seminary in Goa, the College of the Holy Faith, to train Indian priests. Goa may have been his base, but Xavier tirelessly crisscrossed the Indian peninsula, Ramnad in southern Tamil Nadu, among the Dalit fisherfolk, Cochin in Kerala, Vasai in the Portuguese province of the north and in a visit to Chaul, the modern Revdanda. Not forgetting a brief visit to Colombo in Sri Lanka. Francis did not limit himself to the Indian subcontinent. He travelled to Malacca, today's Malaysia, to the Spice Islands, today's Indonesia, to the Philippines and finally to Japan. Struggling with the Japanese language and in the face of bitter opposition from the Buddhist monks, he preached the good news of Jesus and worked many miracles. Within 40 years, the church in Japan numbered 400,000. What was the key to Francis Xavier's success? His humble, winsome personality. 
his simple lifestyle his tireless zeal his deep prayerfulness then of course his powerful preaching which attracted thousands add to this his emphasis on sound doctrine enshrined in the catechism a jesuit invention for instruction in the faith the jesus that francis preached was always kind and merciful bon jesus the good jesus it is fitting therefore that the mortal remains of the saint are preserved in the church which bears this name in goa Side by side with his journeys, Francis found time to write more than a hundred letters to Jesuits in Europe. They were copied, printed, and read from the pulpit, making Xavier a household name in Catholic Europe. His descriptions of missionary life inspired thousands of men and women to follow in his footsteps. Realizing that the Japanese looked up to the Chinese as their model in every respect, Francis determined to go to China, at that time forbidden territory to all foreigners. He did not succeed. Stranded on the island of Sanshan, outside Canton, today's Guangzhou, he died of a fever brought about by exhaustion. It was December 3rd, 1552, and he was just 46 years old. He had spent 12 years as a missionary and planted the faith in six countries across thousands of miles. Today, hundreds of schools, colleges and churches across different lands and cultures proudly bear his name. Thousands of Catholics are named Francis, Francisco, François, Xavier, Savriraj. Without doubt, he is the most famous Jesuit who ever lived. There was never anyone like him, and we can confidently add there will never be any like him again.